Square to talk about 9-11 and uh, the things that have happened since. And we're here with our panelists, and we're going to get to you right now. Uh, we were discussing before uh, our break, we were discussing kind of the change in the area and how people were affected in the area. Could you talk a little bit about like the population, how it moved, how people were kind of affected? Like what did you, what's your opinions of all this? Of downtown lower Manhattan? Right. Well, prior to 9-11, it was pretty much a basic, you know, business area. And then after that, it was like you couldn't get anybody to live down there. Remember Battery Park City, people were thinking about investing in Battery Park City. That all changed really quickly. It's now one of the fastest growing neighborhoods in the city. And um, there's a big plan to just renovate the entire area and turn it into housing. Um, there was some sense in the, in the city planning world that, um, the, you know, before, before the World Trade Towers were there, it was a neighborhood, just like all of New York is. It eventually gets changed. And it was an old um, radio, wasn't it? Radio parts. I mean, it was a it was a neighborhood in its own right that had been there for a long time. The World Trade Center was um, was was protested against. It was not a popular thing in in the 70s when it was when it, they were had proposed it. Basically, what it did was it raised that entire neighborhood and brought two towers up, and it it went against any kind of neighbor, neighborly kind of sense. I mean, that we now know that that Greenwich Street needs to go through that. I mean, it was, all, it was not unlike the super highways that uh, Robert Moses did. I mean, it cut, it, ruined, it, just, it changed that neighborhood. So in the planning world, I think there was this immediate sense was like, ah, we can get we can get that area back again like it needs to be, you know, that that was such an eyesore. It was never built in a way that um, that moved people in a very good way. I don't know how many people ever hung out. No one ever hung out in that plaza. It was I, I dead space. It was nothing going on there. So I think there's a sense and for architects and designers and stuff like that that we can redo this now. We can, re we can redo it in a good way. So those are the intentions for downtown, but the population is, is growing so quickly down there. And um, I don't know. Have you seen a lot, have you seen more uh, businesses that have uh, relocated there? Well, um, I know there's a tremendous effort to do that. I know a lot of people scattered. I think businesses are coming back. I don't know if I can really say that much about that. I mean, there, if you do buy down there now, there's so much construction down there going on. If you do buy, you buy tax-free for at least 10 years. There's no taxes on anything if you, if you, are a home, if you want to buy an apartment right. down there. It's a huge abatement plan to get people back in the area. Yeah. Do you think that now does the EPA, because now that the EPA report has come out, and now that it's been proven that obviously they were, people were told you know, if you have dust on your street, that I mean, dust on your windowsill, then you could just wipe it off with a damp right. cloth. And that kind, that kind of documentation was given out to the general public. Does it seem that the average person that goes down to live there, since it's such a new area to go into now to live, that they actually know that? That they understand, like, the, the health ramifications? I don't think they care. I think it's uh, something in the past. A lot of people coming in might not have even been around for 9-11, and uh, I'm not sure. I think that it's a thing of the past. I'm not sure they'd be that concerned about it now. I will say I was just down at 9-11 this morning, though. I mean, down at 9-11. I was downtown just this morning before I came here. Um, they're bringing down the Deutsche Bank. They're, re, they're deconstructing the Deutsche Bank in three phases, I learned down there. Apparently, this building is so toxic that the precautions they are taking to dismantle this building are like, it's, it, it makes me think that, wow, maybe they're still not even telling us the truth about the dust because these guys are going in and hazmats. They're, they're, it's, I mean, this, this is, is what, what the, the entire, entire area, area looked, looked like. like. 
for many, many months that we were all working in down there. I also worked down there, so I, I smell that smell. Do you guys, do you guys worry about health, uh, health issues relating to your work? You know what, I do a little bit. I actually really do a little bit. My, there's lung cancer in my family, and I used to be a smoker, and I wonder what went into my lungs, and um, I just, I, I can't imagine. I don't, I, I do, I wish now I had been more careful. Do you? Um, they were, they, capital T-H-E-Y, they were coming after anybody that worked down there tremendously to, to become part of their ground zero health clinic tour. I mean, so they were, they were, anybody that had worked down there for any length of time, they were trying to get you involved in essentially being a guinea pig um, to come and get tested for all this stuff. And there was massive amounts of batteries of testing for, they were testing people for everything and continued to test people for stuff. Um, I declined to be part of that study. And they, they were very rigorous about calling to get you involved for probably about two years after 9-11. Uh, um, that's one of those things I put in the back of my brain and don't think about <laughs> too often about what I expose myself to down there. Um, there's a lot of stuff that happened down there that I, I can't even go anywhere near. That my, my own lungs and my own personal well-being. I, if it happened to, if, if I got a health report saying that, um, you know, I did irreparable damage to my internal system, I don't, and if, God forbid something like happened, this happened tomorrow. I don't know that my actions would have been any different from what I would have done. So I, to myself, I say, I, I have my own reasons for being down there and what I gained personally and, and um, universally from my experience down there. I'm hoping, I'm not naive to say, that that's going to outweigh any sort of future health risk that I put myself through. Well, I, I guess... The, where yeah, I would draw a difference is, is the idea of a you rushed down there at 9/11 while it was all crazy. Yeah, there's a big difference yeah. between yeah. going down there Absolutely. and to save people and going down there because you live down there because you saw uh, you, you saw because some real estate yeah. agent said you know you can get tax free down here for ten years for ten years right and and you know it will help with your closing costs. We'll do whatever it takes to get you in here. No, that's true. That's very true. Well, also, the way they opened Wall Street so quickly. I mean, there were workers downtown. Um, my office was on um, Reed and Broadway. We were down there 10 days after it happened. Um, and Wall Street was open already, wasn't it? Very, very quickly, yeah. Wall Street was open, like, within two weeks. I feel that when we were down there, the EPA kept saying the air was safe, that the asbestos test had come back and everything was fine. Um, so we, we went to work. We had to, go, we, went, we had to go back to work. I have a feeling that if the EPA had come out with the truth, I don't think any of us would have been down there to work. I can honestly say that. Well, so... Even though I didn't believe him, it was a weird thing. I mean, it's like, how could this air well, you could be smell good it. to breathe? I mean, it's, yeah. the, it's a smell I will never, ever forget. Um, I've never smelled anything like it before. Um, you knew, how could it be? Any, I mean, how could it be anything but just horrific? I mean, it was, it was a combination of um, electrical fire, um, plastic burning, and then this kind of sweet scent that was mixed into it. It was really, really awful. But I think that if the EPA had come out and said that it was not good, I mean, I think then we wouldn't have been allowed to go down to work. I mean, the city people could not have been responsible for their employers, employees, I mean, so. Well, let me just bounce this out real quick. Does anybody have any questions about 9-11? Can, can you just tell me where you're from? Canada. Oh, wait, come here. Come here. All right, from Canada. Now, well, firstly, what are you doing down here? Is, have you seen anything like this in Canada or whatever? Um, on the internet, there's a lot of chat rooms and that type of thing. A lot of discussion on non-commercial radio, university stations and that type of thing. So it's more discussion. 
what kind of, so from Canada, what kind of media, media did you have and what kind of things did they say about like 9-11? Our media is very influenced by the U.S. media. This is my opinion. Okay, by the, by the U.S. media. Um, so, depending on people who have satellite TV and that type, most Canadians didn't watch CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. So, there's definitely a filter to some of the news. So, we get a lot of um, similar media to what the British get. So did you did you start to see? I guess because the BBC pretty much almost I guess weeks afterwards the American story started to break down very quickly. So when did it? I guess when was it affected, or when did you? When did it get to Canada? In other words, I guess where there was the official story and everybody, and, and then when it started to like, okay, well we're not really sure whether that happened or what this. Like when did the question start, I guess I should say? I think probably a couple of months after in Canada. I, I think everyone was still watching everything that happened on CNN and, you know, watching the play-by-play -play and that type of thing. So I think it took a couple of months. So once, once the story came out, and I guess, well, fast forward to, like, you know, weapons of mass destruction kind of blows up, and then people are like, okay, we don't believe that anymore. What was the discussion in Canada about, like, I guess the things that have happened since 9-11 that the government has done? Well, we've gone through a change of government since that time, and there's been a lot of discussion on basically supporting, um, supporting the U.S. government in their pursuits and that type of thing. So, um, because of the change of government, Canada is now leading more pro-U.S. than they were right after the money. Because you got a new conservative government. Yeah. I can see you and you're thrilled by that. Still a minority government. It's a minority government, but yeah, they're in power. So does, does this support in the United States? I guess, because I want to kind of get this to the panel, it's like, um, do you have anything about 9-11 that you felt something was kind of strange about? or different, was there anything that kind of piqued your interest that like maybe you might have seen in a chat room or just heard in the news but then there was no place to really discuss it that you wanted to ask? The, the one that actually, I, I listened to the, my local university station and there was discussions about if the explosion actually happened before the planes hit. So that would be my... Idea. Lewis, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis? <laughs> Well, um, I had discussed this earlier. I guess you guys weren't here, so I'll, I'll run it for you again. On September 11th, there were explosions in the building reported by numerous sources, reported by people who worked there, uh, caught on the firefighters' tapes of firefighters speaking, saying we have secondary explosions, we have secondary explosions, multiple explosions in the building. I'm on seventh floor, eight, nine, multiple explosions throughout the building. Um, one of the janitors there worked there for 20 years, he, he experienced explosions in the sub-basements. Uh, the chief engineer, who was in the seventh sub-level of the basement, he experienced explosions, and he saw evidence of explosions in the, in the sub-basements. So it's, it's a physical impossibility if the plane hits up on the 90-somewhat floor that the jet fuel will make its way down, which it can because the, the shaft is from red and sealed, that there will be explosions in the basements and then there will be explosions all over the building. Also, the, the way that the buildings were, um, came down. They came down, they, they, they imploded. They came yeah. down in a controlled style at free fall speed. The, the, the building actually vaporized itself. The concrete turned into dust, which is something that a fire wouldn't do, something Semtex could do. So from an engineering standpoint, if planes were to have hit the building, would they have exploded? The, the planes, or, or no, the buildings. Well, actually, from an engineering standpoint, the the, 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 the man who engineered, the designer, the architect of the World Trade Center, he's 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 on tape saying that the World Trade Center was made to withstand two airplane hits of a 707, which was the biggest plane at the time. That 
the way it was constructed with the 47 steel columns and all the other 120 somewhat columns around, around the front, it acted like, 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 a, like a fishnet. So that if a plane hit, it would be like a pencil going through a fishnet. So it was made to withstand two direct airplane hits, not just one, two. So it, 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 it should not have done anything to it as far as causing it to collapse. Like the same way when the B-52 in, I forget the year, you know the year. I think it was 1956. 56 crashed into the Empire State Building and nothing happened. It didn't collapse. So these are, I know they're touted as conspiracy theories. How many people, I guess Americans, are considering the possibility that something else happened? That's a good question. <laughs> See, CNN, CNN uh, had a report. Uh, a poll, they loved those polls, when a certain particular Alex Jones came on, and 82% of the callers believed that the government was complicit. The Sodby poll of last year said 49% of the people thought the government was complicit. Okay? People are people, people have opinions. What about experts? This man called Bill Christensen, former CIA official, national intelligence officer and director of the CIA's Office of Regional and Political Analysis. Okay? On August 14th of this year, he wrote that he was a skeptic of 9-11 conspiracy theories. But upon looking at the evidence, he's convinced the government is complicit. A CIA officer, retired. People love actors in this country. They love them. They, they, they're, they're personalities. They, they're bigger than politicians. Okay, we got one. Charlie Sheen from Two and a Half Men. He went on record saying he believes the government was complicit. Was on, on, on a talk show and caught all sorts of slack for it, okay? And Charlie Sheen said, yeah, there's two conspiracy theories, the government conspiracy theory and our conspiracy theory. My next question is, how did he get reelected? Mm, good, well, that's well, a really good question. Every, now, every, now, now, everybody can bow their hands <laughs> in collective shame. Now, you have... He wasn't elected, it was that, stolen. Right. Now you, you get into electronic voting systems, how accurate they are, what companies control them, do they have ties to intelligence agencies, now you get into that. Elections, uh, free, uh, free elections are not free anymore. Well, it was just, when it happened, I think, I know I was shocked. I couldn't believe it, but I know he was elected again. And I know actually, overseas, in the UK, they're very surprised that uh, it happened. So, I mean, from the rest of the world, kind of standpoint, it seems that Well, it's pretty much the same thing. The reason, same reason why you have a conservative uh, leader as well, even in a minority. There's a, it's, it, there's a similar, seemingly like you know, energy that's going around to put these people in because they will make you feel safe. Now, has there been any issues of like terror attacks in in uh, Canada? Um, there's always the fear, and so fear is sort of perpetuating itself, and as I said, as she said, the media in the U.S. is what's propagated in Canada. So the fear that's generated in Canada by movies, by um, media, by CNN, is broadcast in Canada. And so I've been living in the U.S. for a year now, so I'm getting it from both ends. But these conspiracy theories that are coming about are becoming more and more believed in the Canadian population, and perhaps started, I would argue, the very the very day it happened, the very day it happened, a a a, a big article was published in a blog called "Muslims the, uh, Suspend the Law of Physics," where an engineer writes a blog about the physical impossibility of those towers coming down because the planes were hit. So the very first day, the very first day, there was there was doubters of the official theory. Me myself, when I became a skeptic, was that very same day when the towers collapsed. I wasn't an engineer. And I didn't know much about, you know, those type of issues. But as soon as the towers collapsed, not only that they collapsed, but the way they collapsed. When I saw the towers turning into dust and coming down so uniform and so quickly, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. I was like, that's this. It's just not right. I'm just curious to know what the theories are about the latest um, arrests in London. The, the latest arrest in London? Well, the, the latest arrest in London is they, they captured 24 people, 11 of which are being charged now. But 
the, re- the latest arrests in London always have to, on any arrest, any terror arrest, it's always an intelligence agent that infiltrated a certain group and put certain suggestions into the group. Now, what do they say about those arrests? They weren't operational. The guys didn't even have passports. And they take an old operation, Operation Bajinka, which we knew about for close to 10 years. That's Lancy Youssef's operation from the first World Trade Center. And all of a sudden, rehash it and make it new and Operation Bajinka, Operation, but come on. I thought don't hunt, that's very old. So it's, 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 it's another fabricated terror alert, another fabricated uh, Al-Qaeda affiliated, those Al-Qaeda affiliated group, like the seven kids they caught down in Florida, who are, are Christians. But they're Christians who want to unite Muslims and, and, and Jews, and they call themselves soldiers. And, and he says, we study from the Bible, we study from the Bible. And they're making these kids to be Islamic fundamentalists. No. I was down in uh, San Francisco right after the arrests, and I heard a couple of theories that um, it was because of the upcoming elections in the U.S. that you know they had to basically create support for the war. I don't know if that. All, 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 all the terror alerts that that we had and that we get, you notice, it's always about something. Something's going on. Something else is going on. And if you pay close attention and you read page. 18 of the newspaper instead of page 2 you always get well it seems that the terror alert was more uh, inspirational than operational and you know it's always an old terror alert old intelligence, faulty intelligence the people get released, charges are never brought up so uh, is it being used for political purposes? absolutely. Well to that point what's been on the news now it's John Benet I mean it's a, <laughs> it's a terrible thing that happened 10 years ago but that has you know this is why I don't watch television. But that has taken over all the news now, is that they found this, this you know, crazy guy, wherever the hell they found him. But that's the only thing that's been, that's been reported now, in the middle of all of this other stuff that's actually happening. I mean, the anniversary of Katrina is three days away. or I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that they c- could actually uh, focus on the fact that there's so many people down there that are still homeless and that are still without. Um, that's not anywhere near front page news, because we have Katrina fatigue, but we've got no fatigue for John Bonet. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, mm-hmm. like when Michael Jackson was going through his trial. Right. right. I love exactly. that one. Right. Well, it's interesting that, w- that you mentioned Katrina because now we have the anniversary of Katrina, but then simultaneously there was the issue of the government and exactly what were the failures around Ground Zero and the people that were there, and how did that correlate with what happened in Katrina? Because in both situations, the government fell down. But then it was kind of allowed to be like, okay, well, this is a very, it's a, it's a tragic situation. It's something that we couldn't have expected, even though for 9-11, there was plenty of people and government operational documents that showed that they were thinking about planes hitting the, I mean, the trade center. And the idea that Katrina, they said, well, we could have never guessed this. Now, all you had to do, there was a documentary on, on NOVA, on PBS, Two years prior to Katrina, they had this big study. They did a, a, a simulation of exactly what would happen. The same exact simulation that happened that they showed on PBS where it's got a guy sitting in the middle of New Orleans going with this big stick saying, at the top of this, if, this, if we ever get a storm, that's where the water line is going to be. Less than two years later, the same exact thing happens, and for some reason we're not prepared. So, so the idea is, uh, the reason why I wanted to tie this together is because Lisa actually has been, in, she was intimately involved in Ground Zero and also heavily involved in Katrina. So I wanted to discuss the kind of, the operational things, specifically with like the Red Cross, because there should be a distinction, just so we're clear, there should be a distinction between the volunteers Volunteer, absolutely. and the operational yes, aspect absolutely. of the things that, like all the people that you were seeing in the media saying that, well, this is, oh, everything's fine, we've had the money sent in, it's almost the same thing, just like Katrina, where there's been billions of dollars sent in, but for some reason, it never made it to the ground. So what were the kind of things did you see that were operational that you were hearing, like, if you, I guess you see it in the newspaper since you were avoiding the television, you see see it in the newspaper, but like it didn't match with the resources that you had on the ground. 
For 9-11 or for Katrina? For 9-11. For 9-11. Um, oh, there's, there's lots. Um, around Christmas time, I guess, is when it was the most, um, most illuminated, or the most illuminating time, because during that first Christmas, at Christmas, it was Christmas was very very hard down there, and it was coming it was coming like a freight train. And for the firemen, for most most of the people that were working down there too, were working tremendous hours. People would put in 18 hour days, 20 hour days, and for a long time that site was operational 24 hours a day. So when the when St. John's University, when that was the respite center, there was a section that had like Barker loungers set up that people would come and they would sleep. There was a time at the very beginning where you when the people would come in off of the, the cranes and off of the trucks and off of the pile that you'd have to ask them when was the last time they peed because they would forget they would complete they would be they would be sitting in those trucks for 18 hours a day they wouldn't have eaten they would not have they would not have had any water they were completely dehydrated and there was this very sort of zoned out look about people um, to your question about about money and and all the all the resources that went down there at Christmas time firemen it's it is is an easy is an easy subject um, because everybody loves firemen and rightfully so we're borrowing money from each other to get enough money for the families the families that had lost 343 firemen that were that were were killed that day um, and their families were really struggling to get money for Christmas presents for those kids for their kids um, that's just like one one example of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that thousands and thousands and millions of dollars had flooded into the area and nobody saw anything. And nobody saw anything for a really long time. I think it's just, like I think just, you know, now people, there's some sort of, and then a lot of people opted to not take any money because they, they wanted to have their option to sue at a later time, which I'm sure Lewis could speak about. Yeah, some of the families actually uh, put a lawsuit against the Saudi government because historically, the Saudi government are the, the, the financial funders of Al-Qaeda and Islamic fundamentalism and the Wahhabi schools which, which train to the Islamic Jihad way, which is not, by the way, not traditional Islam. That's, that's, they're extremists, that's what they, they're called extremists. So the families who chose not to sue wanted to, to have the options to not only go after the government like El Mariani's doing a RICO lawsuit, but go after other governments. So they went after the Saudi government. Interestingly enough, the lawyer for the Saudi government was James Baker III, which is the business partner of George Bush and his family. So what's the business partner of our president and his father doing defending the Saudis against 9-11 families? They actually got the suit dismissed and the families weren't even sued. Mm -hmm. So it's all protected by elements within our government mm -hmm. and our corporate system. Do you think that um, because people were not allowed to sue, well, I guess that, that it's kind of a mixed bag because also, since this is a conversation about discovery, when I was uh, building the installation originally, I started doing a lot of research about 9-11 uh, and corruption. And then I found a, a New York, a, 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 a Daily News uh, investigation on exactly where the money went. So then you had people like Donald Trump. Right, right, qualifying, yes, exactly, loans. exactly. You had, exactly. You had companies that had nothing to do with Ground Zero getting millions and millions of dollars while the average person that lived in that region got, like the average person got $500 or less. Mm -hmm. the, or they, they would buy you an air filter. Right. The exactly. HEPA filter. The they did, a HEPA right. filter. That's, that's what they did. Yeah. Right, and so people traded off their health mm -hmm. and then people, like, so then you had the big business that would come in and got all the uh, Liberty Bonds. Right. Because the Liberty Bonds were meant to support rebuilding Ground Zero area. But yet, a lot of the Liberty Bonds went to companies all over the city. Well, they, I mean, they then come out and make many, many, many arguments to the fact that the, the system is being, you know, raped and pillaged by, by common people when they, they, they set these fail-safes up for, you know, six, whatever the number would be, for common people that would come in and would actually be able to benefit from these loans. You know, they blow out a proportion small number of people that actually will um, you know what I'm trying to say help me help me sure well, thank you 
Right. Well, but in other words, that's exactly it, is that the big people right. that went in, because the Daily News report, specifically what their point was, they wanted to make sure that it wasn't the person who got the extra $500 check, right. that was the person who got arrested, but that they went after in, a, in addition, that they went after all the people that actually, the big corporations that extorted money from the Ground Zero area as all the money was coming in. Because then you have the, to get back into where you are at with the Red Cross, the Red Cross ran into incredible operational overruns. Right, that's now, when they got yanked. And that's when they got yanked. But see, the one thing that I guess was less discussed is the idea that there were people that came out at the time that had said, or there were people that were with the Red Cross that had actually resigned in protest. Because they said, why are we running into overruns that are nine, 11 times higher than even if they were in a war-torn area? Because, I mean, technically, it's like ground zero was decimated, but then you're still in the middle of a functioning city. I can I, I some of that I can't speak to but what I can what I can I'll take it to a much smaller scale um, when we were working inside of the tent um, the Taj Mahal tent we would run out of things like band-aids we would run out of things like clean white socks we would run out of things like um, th things that you would that you would need in essentially a triage situation we would run out of them run out of them often um, <laughs> It doesn't make it doesn't make any, it, that kind of thing. It doesn't make any sense. I, I now at the same, but at the same time, when when you were down there, when you were down there dealing with that and running out of things, so that way the triage couldn't work as right. it was supposed to. Right. This is at the same exact time that Giuliani was standing with Bush, saying everything's fine. Right. Everything's fine. We have our heroes down there taking care of it. Don't you worry about it. So, what was your experience being there? It was, um, God, there's, like, it's, things are flooding back really, really quickly now. Um, things like food. Everybody that worked down there put on 25 pounds in those nine months after Ground Zero because the food that they were serving was just this, it was, everything was white, heavy, you know, fat-laden stuff. They were, it was sort of anesthetizing everybody. Um, and people, and it was just like comfort food that people were just sort of stuffing into themselves because in reality, everything that they were looking at was too painful to see. In reality, what they were witnessing was, it, didn't, it doesn't make sense in your brain. There's something, uh, that was the experience for a lot of people, there's something that, that s stops. There, that, you know, the way, because um, you can't, it's too hard. It's too hard. Um, oh, God, Reggie and Daryl. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to that's do okay. this That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, no, because it, 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 yeah. <sighs> Give me another topic to talk about, specific thing. Well, actually, what we'll do is, so we'll, we'll give you a minute there. Um, as people started to, as people left Ground Zero, like, you know, um, businesses started fleeing and the uh, Economic Development Corporation decided to come in and say, okay, well, we're going to give money to help anchor businesses down there. Have you seen that work? Like, in other words, although people have moved in because of the tax breaks, do we see any uh, major anchor tenants at the World Trade Center or anything like that? or? Not yet. Um, but I, I think, think what's, what's happening, happening in, in general, general is that the, the, the city, city has, has bounced, bounced back, back faster, faster than, than people, people expected expect it to in general. In general. Um, um, there's, there's not, not a, lot a lot of data, data that's, that's post-2000 post 2000 census, census that can really say, say that, that. But, but um, the city, city is at a very prosperous time right now. And, and um, it, it seems, seems like 9-11 like had, had, had a little blip, blip as far as, as um, like, like there was, was a little bit of a dip in immigration, there was a little bit of a dip in, in the city kind of taking back and taking some kind of breathing space, space but, but it does, it does not, not seem to have affected the, the overall growth and prosperity of the city. So then do you believe that the city has basically, from an economic and statistical point of view, that it has bounced back to, I guess, to pre-9-11? 
Well, it, it, well, well, I mean, I that's, mean that's the. the it's, it's a nationwide, nationwide phenomenon. phenomenon. The, the prosperity. prosperity. It's, it's not, not just the city. city. Um, um, I think, I think other, other things, things are starting, starting to show, show up. up. The um, this also, also I think like a nationwide, nationwide phenomenon. phenomenon but, but the, the richer, richer getting richer, 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 the middle class is being squeezed out. Affordable housing is. It's, it's much, much, much harder, harder for people in lower income, income brackets, brackets to find, find housing that's affordable for them inside, inside the city. The city. Um, these, are the these are the things that are starting, starting to come to light. To light. It's, it's like, like there was, was a big, big economic, economic development, development. Cr like, like freak, freak out, you know, after, after it all it happened. happened. And, and everywhere, everywhere you look in the city, city it's like nothing we've seen in recent years. There's construction going on everywhere. It's not just downtown. Lower Manhattan is one project of 20, 20 probably, probably in the city, the city as far, far everywhere, everywhere in the city. In the city. Um, I, I think, think that, that hopefully there's, there's going, going to be a backslide a little bit of this this economic, economic development, development outlook, outlook that we've had, had. And, people and people are going to start to say, wait a minute, look, look at the poverty rate. rate. The poverty the rate, rate is still going up. up. The, the middle, middle class, class the, 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 the higher, higher income, income people are taking up this much room. The, low, the, 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 you know, the, middle, the middle class is definitely being squeezed out of the city. And uh, hopefully people are going to start to notice that and start to put some kind of skids. Um, Bloomberg brought in the, um, you know, the EDC was not really that strong of an agency under anybody else. It was Bloomberg that brought that agency into the power that it is. I mean, they were, they are, Way, way more, more powerful than, than I didn't even really know it was a, a, a city, city government, government city government agency before Bloomberg came. So, so there have there been some very, very good, good, good things, things about the prosperity of the city, city. crime's gone, gone down, down, all that kind of stuff. stuff. But, but hopefully, hopefully people, people are going to start to see that, that wait a minute, there's got to be some kind of, there's got to be some kind of balance here that goes on. So I think that the people, the people in, in the, the in the government, the government that can make things happen are starting, starting to figure that out, and, and hopefully there'll be something that, that speaks to that. that. Do, you do you feel that, that like, like so, so? From, from a 9/11 point, point of view, point of view it, it did stop the the, um, the business uh, development down there. Well, well see, see, that's, that's I don't know how to really. I've never really thought about correlating the two. You know, Bloomberg came in. I don't, I don't know what, what his, I, I think he always had this vision for the city. I think that's why he wanted to be the mayor. Because he was going to, he, he had a vision, vision already for the city and for economic, economic development and trying to get, you know, his yeah, whole thing is to try to get, to get um, companies, companies to come back, back. Um, and, revive and revive the city, the city that way. way. So, so I don't know, I don't know what 9-11, I don't know how that, I just think, that, that uh, uh, it, slowed it slowed it down, down but, but I don't I think, think it stopped it at all. Right on. Um, um, you see me at Where are Where you from? from? Germany. Oh, no. German. German. We, we just talked to a Canadian. Canadian. Um, do, you do you speak, speak English? English? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's German. German. Wolfgang. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Haben Sie so, eine Frage für uns? Okay. Well, well um, okay, okay, let's kind, kind of spin this around a second, because this will obviously be the end. The, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the operational, operational aspect, aspect of what happened around 9-11, of course, um, um, the official story, story, then, then there's, there's the thing that's considered a conspiracy theory. theory. What, what parts, parts of the, the official, official story, story have come, come close, close to the, the truth, truth in the, in the eyes, eyes of the mainstream media. media. In other words, like, you know, what's been put out in the mainstream media, media that's, that's part, part of the official story, story that actually, that actually is, is true. true. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> we have certain, certain things, things came out about 9-11 that, that were true. true. When, you, when speak you speak about some, some of the intelligence aspects that happened. That for instance, For instance, the, the, the financing, financing of, of the hijackers. The hijackers. And, 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 and it's interesting because, because although that, that matches what actually happened, happened who, who financed, financed who, who actually, actually did, did, 
the outcome of it is what's interesting because the media told us, and, and, and which was obviously true, that Muhammad Atta, the lead hijacker, received a $100,000 wire transfer from Pakistan, from the head of intelligence of Pakistan's intelligence service, the ISI. The man's name was Muhammad Ahmed. So he sends a $100,000 transfer to Muhammad Atta, and the same day of September 11th, he's meeting with the two chairmen of, of the intelligence committees for Senate and for Congress, uh, uh, Porter J. Gosling and Bob Graham, he's, he's in the United, United, United States, States meeting them, them breakfast meeting on September 11th. Yeah, he had just finished sending $100,000 to Muhammad, Muhammad Atta. The planes crash, Indian intelligence gets a hold of it, Indian intelligence gets the phone records, Indian intelligence gets the bank records, Indian intelligence then gets it to the FBI. Bob Mueller goes down, talks to the Indian intelligence service, they give him all the evidence that the head of an intelligence service of a foreign country, Pakistan, financed the lead hijacker. What, what happens? happens? The head the of intelligence, intelligence steps down, down runs off into the sunset, sunset everybody ever hears from him, him and is and totally blacked, blacked out. out. Now, now if, if the official story is true, true and we, we want, want prosecutions, prosecutions for, for who did the September 11th attacks, attacks the, first the first thing they have, they have to do is extradite the chief of intelligence of Pakistan's intelligence service and put him on trial. But they didn't do that. Not only didn't they do that, Pakistan becomes an ally in the war on terror. The ISI, the ISI is notorious, notorious notoriously famous, famous historically, historically for supporting Al-Qaeda. Al they, they built Al-Qaeda Al through the financing that the Central Intelligence Agency gave them and Saudi Arabia. Arabia. So, so the ISI, ISI built Al-Qaeda, Al they, they still, still deal, deal with them, them. They, they protect, protect them, they put the, the Taliban into power, they send $100,000 to Muhammad Atta, and they become our partners on the war on terror? Something doesn't miss, something's not right there. Where, where, where is the, the intelligence chief of, 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 of Pakistan? Why isn't he in the U.S.? Why hasn't he been brought to trial? The man who he used, his, his proxy, who was the actual handler of, the, of Muhammad Atta, was a man called Syed Sheikh. Syed Sheikh was known to be an ISI agent for years. Syed Sheikh was the man who, when Daniel Pearl, the Wall Street Journal reporter, goes down to Pakistan and starts nosing around, and he starts saying, who is Al-Qaeda? Who's financing them? And he starts tracing it back to the, the, the Pakistani intelligence service, and then starts tracing it back to the Central Intelligence Agency. Now Daniel Pearl disappears. Syed Sheikh gets him. Syed Sheikh kills him. Syed Sheikh gets caught by, by Pakistan under pressure from the U.S. The U.S. goes down there and tells Pakistan, give us Syed Sheikh. And Pakistan, Pakistan says, says we'd rather we kill him than give him to you. We're going to try, try him here. here. And he and has he never been brought to trial. trial. He sits he in Pakistan, supposedly in some jail somewhere. But we don't know, because Syed Sheikh has, has never been brought to trial. Pakistan, Pakistan why? Because, because if you bring him to trial, Syed Sheikh starts spilling the beans on the ISI. Syed Sheikh starts spilling the beans on the CIA and their complicity in the September 11th attack. Another man, Kali Sheikh Mohammed. So the, the supposed, supposed mastermind, mastermind, as far as the 9-11 Commission report goes, of the attacks. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed gets caught by Pakistan. Pakistan. Supposedly, he's in Pakistan somewhere, never extradited to the U.S. The majority of the 9-11 Commission report tells you, uh, based on testimony by Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, based on testimony by Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, but Khalid Sheikh Mohammed has never been presented. Never brought to trial, never had a press conference. We don't even know if he's alive or dead. You look at the mainstream media reports, there's conflicting reports. They say he was killed in a shootout. They say he was captured. They say he escaped. But supposedly this ghost mystery man, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who was an ISI agent for years, who, 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 who people in India, the intelligence service of India, says he gets his power not from the ISI, but from the CIA. This ghost mystery uh, mastermind of 9-11 has never been brought to trial. Instead, you get a shoe, a shoe bomber, bomber. you get you a Puerto Rican Taliban, and, <laughs> and, you, and you get, get a mental retard in Sakharay's Masao. So, so the, 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 the people who, who you're supposed to bring to trial, the head of intelligence for Pakistan, Saeed Sheikh, Sheikh ISI agent, agent, and Khalid Sheikh, Sheikh Mohammed, the mastermind, mastermind are never brought to trial. trial. We're going on five, five years, years, and the, the operational, operational people, people that we know documented where the, the, the finances of this operation have never been brought to trial. Why? Why? Because, because if you bring them to trial, trial and they start, start talking before a jury, they don't, they don't know what, what comes out. out. So it's, it's better, better to make them disappear, disappear like, like they don't exist. exist.
And, and the, the, the sad, sad part, part of it is that, that the American public doesn't know these names. Why? Excuse, Excuse me. Uh, have, have you, have have you, you uh, heard, uh, I've been standing here, here a while. It's, it's like, like um, do you, do have, you have, any have any questions? About, what, 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 what to you does this conversation, conversation mean? Or like, like what's, what's the interest? Well, I'm, I'm from Australia, Australia so, so it's just fascinating, fascinating to see what you guys are thinking. <laughs> what, you, what, 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 what's, what's the, the I don't want to say common wisdom, wisdom because, because, you know, but, but what, what do, you do you see as the common wisdom, wisdom in Australia, Australia about this? Um, that, that there, there is something, something else going on. Has, has anybody, anybody, I mean, because I mean, it's, it's not the point, point thing, there's just the idea of what, what do you think? think? What do you, what do you like, like, as you hear all this and like, you know, all the hyperbole you've heard about it, what do you believe one way or another? Like, what do you think? I really don't. <laughs> I really don't have Why would you think if there's if there's another story, I'll look at it like this, if there's, there's another story, story, why would you think that, that, that we would be told the one that we're being told, told now? Because something's got to be consumable. And at, and at what, what point, point will you, you do you think that that, that would be consumed? Like, like a, in, in other words, words that, that people would be able to buy, buy I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Easy to digest. So, so you, you, do you, do you think, think that, that we'll ever find, find out that, that, do you do think, think that this will be the kind of Kennedy assassination, assassination of our time? time? Probably. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, oh, wait, wait a, a minute. minute. Excuse, Excuse me. me. You, you were standing, standing here for a bit. bit. I, just I just wanted, wanted to ask, ask like, what, what you thought of this. Well, first of where are you from? Uh, you're, you're, you're here from, from Maryland? Maryland? Oh, oh, you're, you're from, from DC and you're, you're from Maryland. Maryland. Okay. okay. Well, well basically, basically what this is, is a panel about 9-11, and, 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 and we're, we're just discussing, discussing things, things from, from the aspect of somebody, somebody who really loves the physical data, somebody who actually um, spent nine, nine months at Ground Zero, zero and then and a researcher that spent all of his that spends all of his waking hours just sitting in documents. So um have, have, you had, had, have, have you had, had any questions about 9-11 that, that just kind of like, like I, guess I guess like things, 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 things let, let me put, put it this way. way. The, 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 the plane that went into uh, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. Have, have you, you know of another time in history that a plane has crashed and not left any wreckage? I mean, you know, is this something, does that seem like something that's normal to you? Zero wreckage in Shanksville. Almost, almost zero, zero wreckage. wreckage. In, in other words, words there was, there was ne never a fuse lodge found. There was, there was ne the coroner, coroner there never, never like, like you know, said it was not the coroner quote after 10 minutes because, because there was no bodies. I haven't heard much detail about it. Is the point that there was an airplane? No, no, no. Actually, this is the goal of this is to ask the question. Just, you know, in other words, like, do you find, I guess, do you, what have you found about this that either is Makes sense, sense or what, what people, people are arguing back and forth. So there's a question about just in general, general what happened in Shanghai. I've never looked at it, but an airplane is going straight down these very, very little large pieces. 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 Actually, there was, there was a plane, plane that went down just, down just, just, uh, just uh, last, last week or whatever, whatever. and it, it was, was in, um, I, I think, think it, it was, was in India. India. That, 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 that plane, plane went, went down, down and, and it crashed at the same exact trajectory, trajectory that, that the plane was supposed to have gone down to Shankville. And, and I'll, I'll just tell you that they got, got pictures of, of, of the, the entire plane. plane. And, and, they found, and they found more or less all bodies. bodies. So, 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 in other words, what... what I, guess I guess I'm just trying, I guess I'm I'm tr trying, trying to get at, do you, you have any questions or what's your feelings around 9-11? Like, do you know anybody that was here when it happened? You were three miles from the Pentagon. Pentagon. In, in Virginia. I mean, well, well, I guess, I guess there's, there's an anomaly. Have, have you ever heard any of this kind of stuff at all? I've never heard any of the details, but it sounds like it's definitely interesting to see what some of the folks have come up with. Well, here's a question, and I'll give you actually a DVD of something that's really interesting that just kind of poses a lot of questions all in one concise thing. Um, I don't, I don't really understand, understand why, after five, five years, years afterwards, 
elaborate interviewing people, we ask people, people that, that almost no one knows any of the details. Like, like the, the idea, idea like, like I think we, we, we know more of the details about Brad and his uh, affairs and such as compared to the idea of like, like what happened here. here. Like, do you? Uh, uh, we're all old enough to remember the idea of the Kennedy assassination. Like, do you think this will be the Kennedy assassination of our time? That we may never get actual documentation that proves definitively one way or another. Well, well I, 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 I mean, unfortunately, there's an anomaly across, across the board. board. Just, 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 just to kind of wrap it up very quickly, the idea is that in the Pentagon, there was, there, there's, there's a small hole, very big plane, plane. and there's, there's no wing sections, no fuselage, and the, uh, there, there, was, was, there was actually no motors, motors found either, either which, which are 12, 12 tons, tons of titanium. So, so they, they don't just, they, they, they don't just vaporize that. People, people have been, been asking, asking, like, how does a plane go through three layers, layers of steel reinforced concrete, concrete and then, then the last thing that's seen is a blast hole, a round blast hole. Now, this, this is their own documentation. documentation. These are the pictures, pictures that they sent from the Pentagon. Even, Even the CNN reporter that, that was there that day said, I don't, I don't know, know what you're hearing over there, but from a mile high, you can see the blast hole. I haven't seen anything that looks like a plane that's crashed around here. That's CNN that's there that day. That's, That's the Pentagon. Pentagon. In the, in the Pentagon, Pentagon, they, they were, were all saying that. that. All, all the reporters that were there, they just didn't see any plane. plane. So, so, I guess, guess the, they, uh, well, in, 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 in no, 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 no doubt about what happened here. here. Well, well the, the only difference about here is the idea of the secondary explosions in the building. And the secondary explosions in the building, what happens after the airplanes hit and during the airplanes hitting. Because, because there, there was, was a, a, a person, person that was in the sub-basement that worked in the building that heard explosions, explosions right, right as the planes, planes were hitting, hitting the, the top. The, the, what, what he believed was, was the down supports were, were being, in, in the sub-basement sub were actually, actually being hit. So, so and the, the place where there's the most, most evidence for secondary explosions was actually on, on the fireman's own case. And I know that, so, well, but, but that's, that's one, one of the biggest, biggest ones, just, just because, because it, it, see, I, my, my opinion is doing this so that to present people, people. Yeah. to present yeah. people who can speak about this, this and so that way we can keep the discussion going, going so that, that way we don't, don't have to then look at it as being the next Kennedy assassination, where, where people, because the Kennedy assassination, people just resign themselves to the idea of, well, whatever, you know, we're just going to go on with our lives, we're pretty good, and so on and so forth, and then, the, the, the name of this installation is called How Do You Know, know What You Know? That's the part that it is. Right, so it's just the idea that they, we're, we're trying to find out from, from discussing with our people here, as well as, well as discussing, discussing with people that, that, that are just passers by, by. Exactly not how do we come, come to this information? information? Why do people believe what they believe? Why do people believe that like they hate us because of our freedoms? I mean, I mean, in other words, these are stories that are propagated in that, like, you know, know and, and unfortunately, hundreds of thousands of people have died, and, and millions of people have been displaced. So, so it's not a static conversation. It's, it's something that's very important right, right now about how we can, can create a more, a, 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 a more informative dialogue. We're discussing it. We're going to get into it. <laughs> what, what I'm going to do, do is, uh, we'll okay, where, where are we at right, right now? 55. Okay. okay. So, so um, well, well, we're, we're, we're doing, doing three segments. segments. So, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to wrap up this segment, segment which, which will be in about a minute, minute and, and then we'll give you the DVD to walk away with. Number two. Peace.